He was one of the true unknown heroes of the Second World War. The spirit of the cavalry lives on and Colonel Ramsey is responsible for all of it. He was a big part of American history that people don't know about. Though his name may not be known to every American, Lieutenant Colonel Edwin Ramsey's courage, leadership, and military service are legendary. Edwin Price Ramsey was born in Illinois in 1917 and raised in Wichita, Kansas. His sister Nadine would later become one of America's first female pilots. But Ed had a more difficult path to greatness. When he lost his father at age 12, he became sullen and rebellious. He was kind of a hellion as a young man in the 30s. I was a little on the rambunctious side. By the time he was a teenager, Ed had developed passions for moonshine and girls. I was pretty close to being a juvenile delinquent. But at 17, Ed's life changed dramatically when his mother enrolled him in the prestigious Oklahoma Military Academy. He always had an interest in horses, and Oklahoma Military Academy was a horse cavalry school at the time, and so he really took to it. Ed became an expert horseman and skilled polo player. He also refused to give in to bullying by upperclassmen. I had gotten in trouble with some of the older cadets, and one of them particularly didn't like me, so he beat me pretty badly one time. He put a blood blister on me about a quarter of an inch thick. A few weeks later, I found a dead rattlesnake out in the fields, and I put it into his bed one night. I heard a scream, and he almost died. <laughs> I got even. <laughs> in June 1941, Ed volunteered for active duty in the Philippines, where he served in the elite 26th Mounted Cavalry. He was with the 26th Cav as a lieutenant, for six months, Ed enjoyed the life of an Army officer during peacetime. Being assigned to the Philippines in those days as an Army officer was considered to be very nice duty. Remember, I was a bachelor, early 20s, and I had a ball. But everything changed on December 7, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The next day, the Philippine Islands were overrun with Japanese troops. Suddenly, this really idyllic existence was just ripped out from under them. A little over a month later, on January 16, 1942, Ed was ordered to take a platoon of Philippine scouts to the coastal village of Morong. The loyalty of the Filipinos could not be stressed enough. They were outstanding. Ed and his platoon were on patrol and they encountered a Japanese battalion. So I ordered a charge of the units that I was with. It's classic cavalry. It's firepower, mobility, and the shock effect of the charge. Can you imagine that kind of job on a horseback? It was crazy, but that's how I happened to have led the last cavalry charge in the history of the United States Army. 